Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Synopsys with Haroon Chowdhury, who's going to talk today about the impact of heat on advanced designs. Haroon, what sort of problems are you seeing as we start getting into the advanced nodes, 10 nanometers, 7 nanometers, in terms of thermal impacts? Yeah, at, at those lower geometries at 7 and 5 nanometer, uh, users are required to pass certain uh, technology rules in order to meet the minimum manufacturing guidelines. These are known as FIT rules. In order to clear those rules before you are ready for manufacturability, uh, you have to measure thermal impact of your, on your design. NFIT is failure in time, and it's particularly important in things like automotive and industrial type of applications, right? Yes, absolutely. That's where the reliability re requirements are very high, and in order to meet them, you need to pass these standards. In the past, we didn't really worry about a lot of that stuff because A, the technology wasn't there, and B, when people were talking about automotive, it typically was done at, what, 180 nanometers? Now, suddenly, they're putting AI systems into cars, we've got much more advanced processors. Now we have to start thinking about how this applies in a lot of markets that had never existed before. That's correct. Because of the density of the design and also the speed at which the design is operating, uh, these kind of thermal effects can lead to uh, failure in time much more quickly than in the past. Why don't you draw this out for us? Sure. Before, uh, at before f 7 and 5 nanometer, uh, users could assume that the design was operating at a uniform temperature uh, throughout their die. At 5 and 7 nan nanometer, that has changed. You have thermal effects due to the proximity of the wires to one another, and also for wires next to certain cells. And is this because the wires themselves are thin, or is it because they're actually packed tighter together? Bo both effects are in play. They're packed tightly to each other, and also there's a high amount of current flowing because of the speed at which the circuit is operating. So these effects start to amplify at these lower technology nodes. And we have the, the RC delay as well, which is producing heat also, right? That's correct. All the coupling and the noise and glitch power that is getting generated in the design is making the problem worse. You've defined the problem. Now what do we do about it? Yes. So in, in the past, uh, uh, PNR designers could work independently from how their uh, how the thermal profile of their chip look when put in a package. That has changed. Uh, now, uh, as you're designing your chip and you go through your various design phases, you need to generate these thermal models, which are uh, generated using the package information and a thermal analysis tool. Once those models are done, you get a chip thermal model which which is non-uniform on your die. Using that temperature information, you run very accurate signal EM. The signal EM gives you an idea about the reliability of your design and how the current density and the uh, process uh, rules are being followed. Does it matter if it's in a package, package with other chips? Does it matter if it's uh, a full system on chip or a heterogeneous design? It doesn't matter because you, you still need to, because of the density of the design and the speed, you still need to consider these effects uh, for any kind of design at this point to have a reliable uh, manufacturing at the end. What goes wrong if you get this wrong? If you get this wrong, then the life, life cycle of your design is reduced, and what could have uh, failed in maybe a few years could fail in a very short time, thus leading to very large costs. And so we're talking about uh, premature aging of chips as well as uh, potentially even field failures, right? Absolutely. Both effects could happen. So this is now moving into the layout phase. Really what you're doing is taking what used to be way further down the design flow and moving it much further left, aren't you? That's absolutely right. What you could postponed towards the end of your design cycle, now you need to consider up front. As you place gates, as you go through the routing and clock tree synthesis process, you have to be aware of these thermal effects and fix them. Uh, just because of the complexity of the design and the goals that you need to meet, you cannot wait till the end to solve these problems. You, they must be addressed up front. What happens when you get an engineering change order or some other um, 
we didn't want this to go this way, we're going to shift it over. Uh, that's actually almost impractical nowadays because you have very strict power and timing requirements. So in order to fix, meet those requirements, you cannot be making these reliability changes late in the design. They have to be baked into your design process and you need to analyze them up front. There are some things that are out of the designer's control though, such as, for example, variation, which is getting worse at five nanometers. How do you account for that? Because the lines and spaces may not be exactly, print exactly the way that you expect them to. That's correct. So there are statistical models that will take the variation into account during the timing analysis and power analysis. So these effects can be uh, viewed in that area as well. A second thing that comes up is there are more devices that are now always on versus what was happening in the past. So you think about a cloud operation, for example, those chips are in use a lot more uh, intensively than they were in the old data center model. How does this affect it? This affects it because as those designs are run, as those chips are running constantly, they will be generating this power and your reliability will degrade further. So in, when you're designing and placing the cells or routing the cells or designing your clock network, you have to add, add gating, you have to add more space between your cells so that even if those designs are running as frequently as they do now, you don't degrade and uh, fail over time. Use cases are completely different though. So uh, does that enter into how you uh, lay out a design based upon heat? Because if you use a, a cell phone differently than I use it, it's going to generate different heat profiles. No, it doesn't because you do have leakage throughout your designs uh, with fin fats and these type of technologies. Your design is never really off at all. At all. So you have to be aware of it. And even though you may not use it, uh, your device in the same way, the impact of the process is still there and the design is heating up as it goes along. So really you're thinking about this almost from the standpoint of worst case scenario, right? That is correct. Is there any way around that where you can tighten that up or is, it, is that market dependent? Uh, you could tighten it up, but there's the risk because if your, if your chip is going to be, a chip could get deployed in any kind of a device. Uh, it, it may not necessarily be just a cell phone or uh, any kind of a mobile tablet. That chip could also be used for any kind of a advanced computing system which where you are running the design at all times. So there is no, uh, there is no bound to this problem. If you get all this right, does it necessarily mean that the chip won't overheat, that you won't get signal integrity problems? It doesn't mean that, but the likelihood of that happening goes down very significantly. And also, these are good device, uh, design practices uh, which, can be, uh, which can help you with runtime, your, the speed and power of your design in general. People have been talking about this for years, but it really hasn't hit home for a lot of designers. What's changed in the past couple of years? Most importantly, the, the pressure on the fabs to have high yield products has gone up. They don't want to get manufactured designs that would fail very easily. And it's, it's a business decision to have uh, very reliable designs that can f function and be manufactured reliably. So part of this depends upon how good your data is too, right? You really have to have very good data about what you're going to be using, and a lot of that data comes out of the fabs. That's correct. The models that we are, we are looking at have been designed with, with the manufacturing in mind. So these are sign-off driven models uh, which can be used at any stage of your design. You don't want to have any over design or under design of, your, uh, of these effects. So you need to have reliable data which will capture sufficient amount of accuracy to make good design decisions. Are the fabs forthcoming with that kind of information these days? They haven't been in the past. They, they are very open with it these days. Uh, they, they are proactive in providing this information to design companies and to software manufacturers. They work with us to qualify and certify the, both the process and the model we are using in the design cycle. Haroon Chowdhury, thanks for a great explanation. Ah, thank you very much. Ed.